Good to see y'all out this morning. Hallelujah. Maybe I'm too loud. Is it too loud? Now? Better? Okay. All right. Praise God. It's good to see you out this morning. It's a beautiful day. Uh, I almost feel like when I say that, a beautiful day in the neighborhood of Mr. Rogers. But uh, we love the Lord and we are here called to, to celebrate together in the presence of the Lord. We are blessed. We see the wreaths around. Uh, we're starting to get look a lot like Christmas. Hallelujah. And uh, as usual, we have Edna here to play for us and uh, bring us into worship. Turn off your cell phones and turn your attention to the Lord. Let the music speak to your heart as we prepare ourselves for worship today. Amen. Trinidad and she went to Israel recently but um, 
she's been praying for a woman that she knew that went home, I think, to Russia to visit one of her relatives who was ailing and was stuck there and couldn't get back to the U.S. And it's been quite a while. And she is going to be able to come home. So we are really excited about that, that God has moved in that. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Okay, so that's at 5 o'clock. And then service is at um, 10 o'clock, as it is today. But if you know somebody who can't come to church, reach out and let them know that we are on Facebook Live and we are on YouTube. Okay? And that would be a good thing. Praise the Lord. I think that's it. Yep, you really took care of that very nicely. Praise God. Uh, we're going to light our Advent candle this morning. Jay and Christine. Augustus, that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone in his own city. And Joseph also went from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of lineage of David. Luke 2.1, 3 4. Thank you. Amen. You know, I was just talking to my wife this morning that uh, as we look at it, it's our the second uh, candle is lit. Uh, Advent is coming very, very quickly. You know, it's uh, it's amazing. You know, I'm not like the stores that has the countdown to how many days, but as we see the candles being lit, we know that uh, it's getting to look a lot like Christmas. Uh, I'm very thankful for the. Uh, People who decorated uh, around the church, we're starting to get things around. We have a few little touches that are going to be added uh, to the to the decorations, but uh, starting to make it feel a little bit more like Christmas. Uh, it's always nice to see a little snow, but uh, I think we can do without that for for now. I, <laughs> praise God. Amen. Uh, we're going to have our. Covenant, Church Covenant. We're going to read that. It's in the back of the hymnals. You got one up there already? All right. God 
God's Spirit working through us. We further resolve to be accept our responsibilities as Christian citizens. Believing that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, we shall endeavor to avoid experiences and habits that defile the body and hinder our witness. Believe that our call to membership in the Church is a call to witness in the world. We dedicate ourselves anew as servants of the Lord of all life. As we pledge our support to the work of our missionaries throughout the world, we commit ourselves to the mission to which God calls us. Acknowledging our human frailties and ever seeking forgiveness and uplifting, we profess our need of the Holy Spirit and commit our lives to Jesus Christ and through Him to the care, the judgment, and deliverance and mercy of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to sing our hymn today, 188.
be seated. Does anybody have a testimony what the Lord has done for you? Yes, good to see you. Justin is here from school. He's still finishing up, but welcome home. Welcome home. You just said my testimony off the Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am so thankful to be back home. This is the longest I've actually been away from home for 12 months. Wow. Wow. And in that time, it has been a blessing just to have the experience to be on my own down in Missouri, North Carolina, where it is shorter and colder than it is here. <laughs> but to be surrounded by not only churches that I can choose from, it's a whole bunch of short but to Honestly, after 12 months, come home and almost like a prodigal son. That's <laughs> what <laughs> it feels like. And to see how much I've changed, to see the happy faces of my parents, and to be back here in the state alongside church family. Amen. It's a blessing that I've been going for hours, but I'm just so thankful to be back here for the holidays and to see everyone. Welcome to the state. Amen. Welcome home. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else have a testimony? Anybody? Well, I have a prayer request and a testimony, okay? Um, Butch had a little fall when he was helping decorate the church, and uh, so I ended up taking him up to the hospital. Uh, he needed a couple little stitches in the back of his head, and of course, having a fall like that is... It's not really good, and so uh, I said, well, you, we need to get you checked out and everything else. He goes, oh, I don't know about going to the hospital. It takes so long and all that. I said, well, however long it takes, it takes, we, but we need to get it checked out. So we got him into the car, and I got him up to the hospital, and they got him in and the whole thing. And believe it or not, we were only there for, I don't know, an hour and a half. I mean, it really went pretty quick. They saw he, one of the ladies that was doing the registration, he knew from Stu Leonard's. I mean, <laughs> she used to work for him. And oh, hi! I didn't think to see you here. Blah blah blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. He's well known, and uh, we continued to pray and had a CAT scan and had the stitches and all that other stuff. That everything was good. Now he's going to be sore, so keep him in prayer as he heals up. But, uh, you know, he, he, you know, had all the doctors check him out. So praise God. So we were just thankful. We got in, got out, got him home. Praise God. And it's also Butch, if you're watching, happy birthday. We're going to sing. Oh, we're going to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy A, a testimony and a prayer request. Praise God. Anybody have a, a, a testimony? Anybody? No? Yes? Well, I mean, I just want to add to what you're saying. I mean, Pat was here with me. We saw him go down, and it is a miracle. That it didn't have a concussion. That, I mean, there's so many roads we can go down, which I'm not even going to go down. <laughs> so um, I'm very, very grateful to God that this is all happening. Amen. So praise the Lord. Amen. I also just want to uh, thank God for last night's movement of the movie and how he so far for me to brought people in and we were doing that. Amen. I really thank God for that. I thank God for um, my, this is kind of a testimony prayer request. My daughter Hannah has the flu and her one child, Georgia, has the flu. We don't, you know, the preschool stuff, so. Georgia is better, and Hannah is on the road to getting better, but it takes her a lot longer, but it does a little bit more, you know, so um, we just need to keep praying for her, but God is working on her. Amen. Her. Amen. Oh, and also, sorry, my son Joshua has um, had a herniated disc uh, for quite a while, and it's gotten to the point where he has 
some kind of, I don't know, early onset of arthritis even in the back, and he's 36 years old, so that's not so great. But anyway, he was on medication and was doing absolutely nothing. He was in pain, I would say, most of his probably weight and average. And so they decided to do an injection of a steroid into his spine, and he had that done, and he is doing so much better. So, you know, very, very grateful to God. Amen. One day at a time. Amen. And while we're praying for our family, uh, Justin is healing up. He's doing fine, but he had COVID, which meant he couldn't go to work. So, you know, kind of a mixed blessing there. So we're praying for him. Uh, we're pray praying for Marge. Marge was moved from the hospital to uh, a hospice home in uh, Stanford, which is beautiful. I was able to go down and see her. They treat her so well, and there's only a few people there. And, you know, one of the, the comments that she made is, you know, in the hospital, they give you those thin little blankets. They gave her like a duvet thing, and she had it pulled up to her chin. And she says, oh, this is so nice and warm, you know. And she had a little smile on her face. And so I, I was talking to her, and then she said on her bed, there was a button to push. And she goes, and you know what? They even answer it. <laughs> Not to say that at the hospital they that eventually don't get around to you, but at this place they only have like six people there and they're very well attended and the lady who was there was was marvelous. She was just great. And it is hospice and, uh, you know, they're going to keep her in, in good, uh, good touch and good care. Uh, and we all love her and... Uh, understand. So praise God, just keep her in prayer and the family in prayer. Uh, then we have our regular pastors that are in need of prayer. Uh, Ron is still like waiting for the seat, seat, seat Rod, pardon me, is, is going to see these ear specialists uh, coming up soon for a test. Uh, Larry is uh, still on the meds. Uh, Clyde Whitmore is still battling the uh, reappearance of the cancer that he has, so we're praying for that. The little boy named Phineas is supposed to be coming home when? Today? Tomorrow? But soon, uh, for the first time. Uh, still on a respirator, but uh, pray for that. And uh, we already prayed for my kids, so praise God. Hallelujah. And my grandkids are, the, are regular. What? And you, praise God. She always puts herself last. I, yeah. Jesus, others, and you to spell joy. Praise God. Thank you for that. Any other prayer requests this morning? Yes. Praying for Mike. Continue. How's your grandfather doing? Okay, you'll talk. But no, no news is good news. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lynn? Thank you for a sick Okay. We're traveling to Vermont, we pray no snow. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else prayer requests this morning? Yes. Uh, prayer requests for uh, Janice and Joanna, uh, for Anita and Joanna, and for Joanna, who on the 22nd is having a scheduled C section. So we need to continue to go up in prayer. These last few weeks have been really tough as far as fatigue and you know, all of that. They couldn't, have, they couldn't have scheduled it for Christmas? No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Praise God. That, that's good. Amen. Amen. That is their Christmas present. That is their Christmas present. Hallelujah. There you go. There you go. Anybody else? 
Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, the Prince of Peace, Lord God, we thank you for who you are and what you've done already in our lives. Lord, we pray that you would continue to give us the joy by putting others first, Lord God, and that we would continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We know that there are so many things going on in the world today, Lord God. There is so much illness and diseases and injuries and so many things that are, are so devastating to people, Lord God, but we know that you are here and that you are the answer for the world today. Whatever that problem may be, be in their lives, that Jesus is the answer. And Lord God, we thank you that we can draw near to you, that in spite of all the other things around us, that you slumber not nor sleep, that you are there, that you are always faithful, Lord God. Lord, we thank you and praise you for who you are. And we look forward to this, this season of Advent of your, your coming again, Lord God. As you came the first time, Lord God, we know that you're coming again, and coming soon. So prepare our hearts, Lord God, to continue to serve you, to look forward to seeing and meeting you, and to telling others about you, Lord God. We thank you and praise you, Lord God. We pray for the continuance of the service today, that you would touch hearts and touch minds, and Lord God, that we would be able to know that we are here in your presence. For where two or three are gathered together, Lord God, we know that you are here with us. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is trying to say to us, Lord God. Anoint us, anoint me as I bring forth your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we take a look at moving through this is the second, as I said, the second Sunday in Advent. And uh, last week, don't have to go to your notes, okay? Does everybody remember what last week was? Anybody? Hope, you remember. Hope, you remember. Hope. Okay. This week is faith. Faith. Okay. Well, I think we talked about a little song that our kids, F-A-I-T-H, all it takes is a little bit of faith, right? Today is going to be talking about faith and moving forward with our faith and the importance of that. I want you to take a look and uh, I'm going to kind of do it in a little bit odd way. I want you to look at Romans chapter 10, Romans Chapter 10, you can look it up on your phone if you want. You know, I know some people just do it that way. Their, their Bible now is in their, their phone. And I know I use a concordance and some of the other study tools. I use my phone in, in a wonderful way. So, you know, some people say, get off your phone. But if it's looking at the word of God, it's, it's okay. Amen. So Romans 10, verse 17. And this is what it says. So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God or the word of Christ. It depends on the translation. But for me, we take a look at Christ as being that word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. As we look at the Christmas season, so it's the word of God, yes, but you know, it's Christ who became what? the flesh, the little incarnateness of the Word of God. So the Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. As we look at the Christmas season, this Word that, you know, God has come and done, He brought Christ into this world so that we would be able to see Him in that image. And that He came to be the servant. He came to be the sacrifice. He came to bring it to our conclusion of who God truly is and how much he loves us. And we need to have faith that that is his plan. You know, so many people just lately, I was looking at a uh, 
report on this new telescope that they're having and they say we can see so much further back into time and, and the Big Bang and, and now they're starting to say well there were not just one but there were many and, and they see these things and as my wife said she saw this picture and it, you thought it was stars and she says those aren't stars each one of them is a galaxy with millions of stars within that one little dot so the awesomeness of who God is is just amazing. And if we look at the Bible in the beginning, and what it says is, interestingly enough, he says the first thing that came was, let there be light. Boom. <laughs> there was light. God just spoke it, and that word, let there be light. Do we have faith and trust in what God has done and who he is? The word here says, so faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ, the word of God, the word that he has, and who he is in completeness. Our faith is from that. It's not what I say, and again, I, I, I say it so many times, that Billy Graham would hold up his Bible and he says, don't listen to what Billy Graham says, and that's himself, but the Bible says, you know, that's where we all need to be. The Bible says, the word of God says, and our faith is in hearing that word from him. And the wonderful thing about it is, is sometimes we hear, now listen to me, we hear without even hearing. We hear from God and looking at just a little something that we see in nature. And we take a deep breath and say, wow. Look at God. I don't know if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon. If you've ever seen pictures of it, it's awesome. But when you actually stand on the edge of it and look out there, the vastness, the awesomeness of it, you just sit there and you go, wow. You know? And to try to get some kind of measure and understanding of what God has done, this is just one little look of saying, look at God. It's so vast. And that's only a little, psh. when we talk about the eternity and the, the wonderfulness of who God is, our faith is in him. His plan is secure. And as we look at this today, we're going to say about our faith is in him. Praise God. Now I want to jump over to uh, Hebrews for just a moment, and then I'm going to come back to Romans. So kind of keep your finger in, in Romans 10 because we're coming back to it. Jump over with me, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 11. Chapter 11 in Hebrews is what they call the hall of faith. The hall of faith. It's talking about faith. And it starts out right in the beginning of Hebrews 11. It says, now faith is the assurance. Assurance means the reality the substance, the confidence of things that are hoped for, and the conviction of things that are not seen. As we look at this, it also means that it is not just the conviction, but it's the proof, the evidence of things that you can't see. You know, like the air in this room. Do you believe that there is air in this room? Do you, do you believe that there's enough air in this room to take a ne your next breath? I mean, you're not really thinking about it, are you? You're not thinking about, well, is there enough, enough air in here for me to take another breath? You just do it, don't you? You take it in. You have confidence. You have evidence is that you're still alive. But you can't see it. You don't know it. Unseen. It says, for men of old have gained approval. And in verse 3 it says, by faith we understand that the world's were prepared by the word of God. That's why I'm going back to the word of God. So that what we have seen was not made out of things that were visible. God created it by just speaking into existence. Creation is making something out of nothing. Okay? Man has never been able to do that. Let me repeat that. Man has never been able to do that. We haven't, able, when we say, well, we created something. Well, 
when we say it in man's idea, the word created, it's not the same thing as when we talk about God creating it. We create a wonderful dinner for our family. We cook a wonderful dessert. We make this wonderful, you know, sweet thing. You know, we build a new, I created this new invention. Well, that's fine and all well for men. But when we say that God created, it means he took nothing and he made something. Can you imagine the fact of how do we get light? You ever think about that? How do you get light? Well, you turn on and flip the switch. You have electricity. Oh, okay. Or you turn on the gas. Okay. And you light it. Produce, you know, all these things. Are. Push a button on a flashlight and the chemical charge in the battery gives us energy to light the light bulb. Let there be light. Okay. Those are all good. But when you have nothing, think about it. When there is nothing there, Nothing means nothing. And he says, let there be light. When he said, let there be light, you know, I don't know if this is exactly what it was, that there's a sun and stars. And, you know, did he turn them all on at the same time? Can you imagine that? The Bible tells us that, that God even knows all the stars and he knows them by name. Really? Even our scientist says, well, this, this star is X724446. I mean, really? I mean, come on. They have so many, they don't even name them. And there's a, a book that she says, here, for a Christmas present, give your loved one the gift of a star. A star will be named after them and put into this book, blah, 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 blah. You know? Well, uh, I claim that constellation over there that's got about six billion stars, okay? So I can just, well, which one is mine? <laughs> Does it really matter? You know, it, it's kind of a con type of thing. But God, in his total understanding, he knows them. He knows everything that he created. Can you imagine that? What there be light? <laughs> you know, it's pretty awesome. Wow. Uh, my wife and I, a few years ago, decided to get an artificial tree. And the artificial tree has all the lights on. You just put it together and plug it in and they all pop on. And it's pretty amazing, you know, that you all of a sudden see all these lights. And oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? But can you imagine again in creation that God said, let there be light? Wow. The awesomeness of God. When we talk about faith, we need to know that it's God, the evidence, this faith that we have is the ability to see what God has done for us. Now it goes on in verse 6. I want you to, we're still in Hebrews 11. And verse 6 says this, And without faith it is impossible to please him. Who's him? God. It's impossible to please God if you really don't believe, if you don't really have faith. You can't please God. It goes on to say, For he who comes to God must believe that he is. Well, that makes a lot of sense. If you don't believe that he is, you're not going to come to him. We need to come to God believing that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. God is looking for people to seek him. If people really look, they will find him. It really drives me crazy. This is, oh, there is no God. These people did it. And I'm sitting there going, really? Have you really tried to find him? Have you re really looked? Have you really been trying to reach out and see if there is a God? Have you really tested God? Because if you did, you would find him. Because we need to believe to have any faith in anything that we know that he is, that he exists, and he is a rewarder of those who seek him. The Bible says it, so I believe it. That if people seek God, they will find God. And he will be a rewarder to those people who are seeking him. There is the word. Do you have faith enough? As we looked at that, men of old. And when we see men of old, we go all the way even through the Old Testament and the New Testament. 
that as they sought God and they found God, he continued to show them time and time and time again that they had faith in him that they did these things. Now, I don't know about you, but if we had faith in God, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, you know, bend your knee, the trumpet has sound, the music has sounded, bow down to this idol of the king. Uh, I don't think so. No, not going to do it. Now, I, I don't know about you, but can you imagine being in a, a, a big, big group of people? Maybe a thousand, ten thousand, maybe a hundred thousand people. And they're all there for one purpose, that when the music sounds, that they're going to bow down on that plane, and they're going to look to that statue, and they're going to honor that, that God, little G. So, ready? The music sounds. They start playing. And everybody takes a knee. Except these three guys. Imagine they're just standing there. Looking around. And I can imagine people right to the left of them going, Psst, come on. Can't you hear the music? Psst, take a knee, man. Take a knee. Not doing it. Not doing it. Uh-uh. So they get called before the king, and the king says, hey guys, <laughs> maybe you didn't understand. You know, when the music sounds, you gotta take a knee, man. You gotta, you gotta bow down and worship that idol of me. He said, king, we're not even gonna be cautious about how we answer that. You know? Our God is able to save us. But even if he doesn't save us, even if he doesn't take us out of your hands, we will still not bow down to you. We will trust him only. Is that the way that we have faith today? Is that the faith? Now I've said I'm going to go back and forth. Faith comes from hearing. Are you hearing what God says? Are you hearing his word? Are you tuned in to hearing more specifically, not just what the word of God says in the print, but the spirit of God is speaking to your heart. Are you open to the spirit of God telling you what's right and what's wrong and where to go and what to do? Are you open to that? Faith comes from hearing from God, from trusting God. Now, I've probably told some of these illustrations so many times before, but, you know, do you really hear from God? Well, I had a friend of mine who was leaving church. And he went and he got on the Merrick Parkway and he was heading north. And as he's driving by one of those little rest stations or everything, God says, pull over. I don't need gas. Pull over. Okay. Okay, Lord, what? He says, I want you to buy a gallon of antifreeze. He says, well, Lord, I, I don't need antifreeze. He says, buy the antifreeze. Okay, Lord. So he goes in and he buys a gallon of antifreeze, puts it in his car, and he gets in his car. He says, Lord, unless I can see why I needed to buy this gallon of antifreeze, you know, am I really hearing from you? I'm trusting you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. He says, I need to know that I really heard from you. Nothing. Crickets. Get back on the highway. Not more than 500 feet or a little bit more than that. There's a guy pulled over to the side. His hood's up. Steam. Shh. Pulls over. He says, Lord, is this what you sent me for? Uh-huh. He gets out of the car. He walks over to the guy and he says, you might not believe this, but God has sent me here with a gallon of antifreeze. He just told me to stop and pick it up for you. And the guy says, oh, well, that might, you know, do okay. But I, you know, this, my radiator is completely bone dry. It's a gallon of antifreeze isn't going to do anything. And he goes, well, God told me to buy you a gallon of antifreeze. So I think that he can do it. So first, let's pray for your car for its healing. He says, what? And he laid his hand on the guy's car and he says, Lord, 
you told me to bring this and I pray that you would heal this car and that you would receive all the honor and glory and praise. So the radiator cap had already been is off and the steam it takes the gallon of radiator fluid and starts to pour it in. Bloop, 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 little by little, bloop, 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 bloop. Keeps pouring, bloop, 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 keeps pouring. And he's pouring and pouring. He says, well, we'll just wait until this thing fills up. And comes to the end just before he runs out of the container being empty. Comes to the top of the, you can see it in the radiator. He goes, well, the radiator seems to be filled. You know, I got a little bit left in here, so start your car and it'll pump it through the system. The guy says, okay, so he starts up the car. Goes down a little bit, he loop, 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 pours it in. Shakes the container, says, well, puts the lid on it. There's a little bit left in the container. If you have any problems, which I don't think you're gonna have, because God has healed your car. He sent me here with this. And if he sent, God is perfect, so. And he puts the cap on it, and he says, just remember to give him praise. Thank the Lord. And he stood there. And the guy says, yeah. He says, no, I, I, I told you that you need to thank God. He says, thank the Lord. And he gets in his car. And he went back to his car and he was like, Whew. you know, he was like, you know, I did hear from you. I did hear your word and I was obedient to hearing you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When we hear the word of God, when we see the word of God, when we see it become flesh and dwelling among us, Jesus became what? The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. As we look at the Christmas season, I don't know about you, but that's one of the things that just gives me chills. That the word of God, the one in creation, that Jesus Christ was with God and is God and was there. Nothing was created that is created except by him. And he was created for us to see him in his wonder. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Whew. Can you imagine? I, I don't know about you, but that he loved us enough to, to bring it down to our level that we could see it. The word became flesh and he dwelt with us to grow up, to go through it. And then for those brief years to teach his disciples and then go to the cross for us to pay the price for us, our salvation was in that. What a wondrous Christmas gift that we see. The Word became flesh to all among us. We need to look at that. Now I want you to go back to Romans. I told you to keep your finger in there. Look at verse, starting with verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we are preaching. The word of faith that we are preaching is just this. That which is in our heart, that which is in our mouth, that we should be telling other people about Jesus. I say it all the time. I tell people Jesus loves you. I say it all the time because I need to get that message out there. A friend of mine who has started me along that way told me that just last week he went into a store and was asking about some things. And uh, the guy says, uh, yeah, I'm sorry we don't have any of those pallet things anymore right now, but we'll be, they'll be coming in. And he said to him, has anybody told you today that Jesus loves you? And he looked at me. He says, you're that guy. And he goes, excuse me? You've been in here before. He goes, yeah. He says, and you told me that Jesus loves me. Yeah, he still does. But he says, what a wonderful feeling to have somebody say to you, you're that guy. You're that gal. 
when you've told them before and they still remember that you've told them that. Are you telling people? Are you proclaiming it? The faith that we have is what we are preaching. Now I want to go on with this. Look what it says in verse 9. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him up from the dead, you will be saved. Isn't that a great message that you can tell people? How do you get saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess him with your mouth and believe that God raised him up from the dead. It says, you will be saved. For with the heart, a person believes. A person resulting in righteousness. When we say something, the righteousness is not ourselves. For our righteousness is as filthy rags. But he makes us righteous for what he has said. And when we repeat what he says, it's not what I say. It's what the word of God says. It's what the Bible says. It's what Jesus said. And we need to repeat what he has said. Our mouths need to confess this. These things result in righteousness. And with our mouth we confess. Confession. That we can't do it on our own. We say that we are without sin. It says in 1 John. We make God a liar. And God forbid. Resulting in salvation. It comes from our uh, confession. Salvation comes from our confession of our sins. For he is faithful and just to forgive us from all unrighteousness. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. Now, I, I want to really take that verse 11 and look at it to you again. For the scripture says, not what Pastor Saunders says, not what a church says, not what all this, but what the scripture says, he who believes in him, Jesus Christ, will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed if you tell people that you believe in him. He will be there. For there is no difference between a Jew and a Greek. It means a Gentile and a, and, and a Jew. Okay? It means pretty much the whole world can be divided into those two categories. For the same Lord is Lord of all. There, I want to give you a translation of that word all. It means all. I mean, we need to know that the same Lord is Lord to all of us. Yes. Abounding in riches, mercy, and grace. For those who call upon Him, call upon His name, how do we receive? By calling on Him. How many times do we look at situations and we say it's hopeless, but we just, bloop. instead of calling out and asking for help, we just, well, it's hopeless, so I'm not going to say it. Those who call on Him. I know for a fact I've had situations where a, something happens and my whole prayer, beginning and end, is Jesus. That's it. That's it. And He answers my prayer. I know for a fact that the Bible says that Peter got out of the boat and was walking on water. And Oh man, he's doing great. Talk about faith. What a powerful man of faith. Woo! He's walking on water. Look at him go. Whoa. But then he looks around at the storms and says, uh-oh, I can't do this. Bloop. Down he goes. Where's your faith, brother? Well, his faith was in calling out. He says, Jesus, save me. Jesus shakes his head and reaches down and lifts him up out of the water. I don't know about you, but the physics are amazing. Not only that Jesus was walking on water, not only that Peter was walking on water, but the fact that he could reach down with his hand and then just lift him up out of the water and put him in the boat. They didn't say that they walked back, that he carried him in his... No, he reached down, lifted him up and put him in the boat. Whoa, whoa, how powerful it is. He is listening. When we call out, 
He is listening. There is the distractions of the storm around us, but when we call on the name of Jesus, whoever calls on the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord, it says right there in verse 13, you can put it in bold print, you can underline it, you can put italics around it, you can put it in a, a highlighted thing. Whoever, whoever, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's not going to let you down. Well, if you had more faith, you would have learned how to swim and, you know, you would have continued to walk. And he didn't rebuke him. Now, when he got back into the boat, he rebuked all of them. He says, oh, ye of little faith. Ye of little faith. Really? Look what I did, Lord. Look what I did for you, Lord. Really? We got to keep going. Whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. We need to look on that what it goes on to say, but how will they do without hearing a preacher? How will they believe in him that have not heard without a preacher? Well, guess what? The word preacher means a proclaimer. It doesn't mean a pastor. It doesn't mean a reverend. It doesn't mean a certified person with a whatever. The preacher, the word there, preaching, means proclaiming. Are you ready to proclaim? Are you ready to tell somebody about Jesus? We see how simple it can be. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess our sins. And believe that he is able. You know, we need to do this. We need to all be preachers. If you're not a preacher, you should start to become a preacher, a proclaimer. You all can do it. If you've been saved, if you've called out on the name of the Lord, it says you will be saved. If you have confessed your fault, you will be forgiven. If you are able to, you will not be disappointed. Whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. Well, the only time we get disappointed is when we start thinking about ourselves. Oh, God, you don't really love me anymore. Oh, I didn't get that new whatever. Right? That doesn't mean he doesn't love you. That doesn't mean anything. We take a look at, you know, going on going on. I, I, I am just taken back by God speaking to my heart in different situations. And the whole thing is, you know, Philip was preaching a great message. He was having hundreds and thousands of people getting saved and turning their hearts to the Lord. And God tells him, go out into the desert on this des desolate road. Really? Yeah. And he goes out there and he sees one man standing in a chariot reading the word of God. Okay. Let me go over and talk to him. Do you understand what you're reading? So how can I understand unless somebody explains it to me? Ha <laughs> ha. Let me tell you. I mean, I, I can just imagine him start almost dancing. Let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about who he is. Let me tell you what this scripture means. Let me tell you how it points to the Messiah. Let me tell you how he can come into your life. How he's coming into my life. How your sins can be forgiven. How you can be born again. Hallelujah. And he goes, wow. Woo. And he looks over and he sees some water and says, you know, talk about getting saved and again getting baptized. Hey, Pastor, don't you have a tank back there? I have a, a, a guy that I met one time and he was telling me about his church. He says, we keep our baptismal tank full all the time. I had to put in a filter so that we add a little chlorine, just like a swimming pool. He says, so that we can keep it ready. He said, keep it ready for what? He says, for baptism. Did somebody get saved and they want to be baptized? I talked to him really quickly about what it really means and I take him back to the tank right then and there. But I don't have anything to put. That's all right. Your clothes will dry. And he takes them back and he baptizes them. And I said, wow, that's a little, you know, crazy, isn't it? He said, 
works for me. It's what God has told me to do. Well, going back to Philip, the guy says, well, can I be, he says, what prevents us? And he takes him down into the water and he baptizes him. And the guy comes up and he's praising God. And Philip goes, he's translated away. Gone. Whew. We need to know that by faith and by hearing and by moving forward, it tells us that we need to proclaim. We need to preach the word of God. How will they preach unless they are sent? For it is written. Now listen to what it says. I'm in verse 15. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of good tidings. Wow. How beautiful are the feet of you who bring a good report, who bring the good news. The good news is Jesus Christ died for me. Jesus Christ was buried for my sins. Jesus Christ rose again. Jesus Christ ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God making intercession for me. Jesus Christ is coming again soon. It was spoken to them, the same Jesus that you saw go this way will be coming back. They waited upon the Lord as he had told them. And the Holy Spirit came down and anointed them to be able to be proclaimers to be a witness of Jesus Christ. What better time than the Christmas season to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, to lift up and to tell people, do you know that Jesus loves you? Woo! Has somebody told them? Well, it's time that we start telling everybody. And they said, yeah, I know that. He says, well, this is the thing that God put on my heart. If they say, yeah, I know that, have you told him, told Jesus that you love him? If he tells you, you know, I love you. You've seen the movies, the, the sappy things. That the girl says, I love you. And the guy says, uh, 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 that, that, that's good. He doesn't repeat back that I love you. Now, if we really love somebody, it doesn't matter if they respond by saying that. Jesus says to us, I love you. I gave my life for you. I was crucified for you. Even while you were in your sins, I died for you because I love you so much. Now love one another as I have loved you. He didn't wait for an answer. They didn't have to say yes, Lord. They didn't have to do that. We don't have to wait either. We just have to tell people that Jesus loves us. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. He's already told us how much he loves us. As we prepare ourselves for communion today, it is a remembrance of how much he loved us. As we take a look at that, I trust that you've all been served the emblems. Have you received, everybody? Okay, Annette, we have one in the back. On that night, when Jesus was with his disciples, he told them how much he had looked forward to having this meal with them, the communion, was just the completing of the Passover meal. And Lord, we thank you that we can remember what you did for us. Let's sing the first verse of Amazing Grace.
So Lord, we thank you for that broken body that you were beaten, that you took the stripes upon your back. And by those stripes, we are healed. We thank you, Lord, as you were taken to the cross all the way, that you did that for us. We receive the bread. Let's sing verse two. eternal covenant between God and man. And that just was symboling, symbolizing the shed blood that he was going to give. And he told his disciples that this is my blood, which is for the remission of sin. For there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. And all of you, all of you drink of this cup this covenant, this promise, until I come again. So Lord, we take this cup together and remember that you are coming again. And we do this in remembrance of the sacrifice that was made for each one of us. And we say, thank you, Lord. Receive the cup. Now, if you'll stand together and take someone by the hand, we'll sing the last verse of Amazing Grace. When we our Redeemer and Savior and friend, we go from this place and we will proclaim the good news, the plan of salvation that we have received, rich and free. And Lord God, that we would tell others about that good news, that perfect plan that you have for us, you have for others too. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.